<laughs> Clan Mulder is one of the four great Skaven clans which specializes in the mastery of breeding, mutating, and surgically creating some of the most horrific and fearsome war beasts to have ever existed. Such is the demand for these ferocious creations that Clan Mulder is one of the wealthiest of all Skaven clans. While many are jealous of Clan Mulder's might, few dare to openly challenge them. Not when the clan can field an entire army of grotesquely mutated war beasts. The loathsome stronghold of Clan Mulder, known as Hell Pit, lies deep within the northern wastes. The many foul creatures that roam this land provide the raw material used in the clan's breeding pits, skin forges, and flesh laboratories. The clan Mulder Spine Rune is a common brand amongst the clan's packmasters, as are symbols of the glowing green rat and crude renderings of the whips and prodders used to goad the beasts that have made the clan infamous. Indeed, the respect and awe the other clans feel towards Clan Mulder is well deserved. Their twisted creations enhanced Mulder's prestige and influence in the Under Empire. But, it is whispered amongst the other Skaven that this clan plots something else. Something far more dangerous and sinister. Whatever it is, none can say with authority. But the sudden surge of new and terrifying creations spilling out from Hell Pit has more than one Skaven clan nervous. No sense there is in the man things world. They take their best and strongest, those touched by the horned rat, and either kill kill or turn them out as unclean. No wonder glorious Gaven will one day take all they have. Still, still, good for us. More meat for the ladder. From Brokut. A random clan Mulder Skaven. Founded by Warlord Malkrit by minus 1450 IC, Clan Mulder holds Hell Pit as their home and lair. The minds of this teeming Skaven metropolis are rife with warpstone. And it is this material that is used to such excellent effect in the clan's horrific work. The Master Moulders meld flesh and bone like clay, breeding or building beasts that can be used to bolster their armies. Given their exposure to the same mutating warpstone they use in their experiments, the Master Moulders are something more or less than typical Skaven. Stories are told of Skaven mutants that fly the banners of Clan Mulder, their bodies warped, twisted and armoured, surgically altered or hideously transformed. 
the master molders tinker with the anatomies of creatures in much the same way that clan scryers, warlock engineers fiddle with mechanical war machines. And the end result of these biological experiments are often just as terrifying. Giant rats and rat ogres are just two awful examples of Clan Mulder's ingenuity. Not only can the denizens of Clan Mulder create monsters well suited to warfare, but they have also learned to control them. The clan's pack masters, wielding whips with exceptional skill, can drive rat swarms, giant rats, and rat ogres into the teeth of oncoming enemy formations where they can inflict the most damage. Off the battlefield, the pack masters train their beasts to fight by pitting them against one another. The skilled and strong survive, the weak and wounded die. The Council of Thirteen sees Clan Mulder as a valuable tool, and the beasts they create are valuable indeed. Not only do they possess battlefield prowess oftentimes unmatched, but they also inspire terror in the enemies of the Skaven. Hordes of giant rats and packs of ravenous rat ogres can cause a line of troops to crumble even before they have made contact with them. Mulder prides itself on the services it offers to discern, not to mention, wealthy Skaven warlords. Many of their creations are available for sale, and they are proud to offer custom designs made to order. The Council of Thirteen benefits from such options, and nearly every Lord of Decay is the proud owner of at least one Rat Ogre. Two or three Council members possess nightmarish creations that few but the Master Molders have ever seen. Although their skills are geared towards changing bodies, the Master Molders are quite adept in the healing arts as well. With the aid of Warpstone salves, any wound can be healed and any body can be improved. The oldest members of the Council of Thirteen have survived to their extreme ages through liberal applications of Clan Mulder's alchemy. The Military The village of Tolstadt is no longer there. Oh, the buildings, cottages, even the town well remain, but the folk that once walked the central avenue seem to be gone. Their doors hang open, their suppers sit, rotting upon moulding trenches, half-eaten as if they had been interrupted by important guests, even as they dined. By Dolven Featherbright, an elven scout. Beasts figure prominently in the methods and strategies of Clan Mulder. The principal units in any of Mulder's armies are the Pack Masters, who direct hordes of giant rats, rat ogres, and mutated rat swarms against their enemies. Clan Rat Warriors, the most common antagonist in many Skaven armies, are only supplementary to this clan's host. The beasts of Clan Mulder are their calling cards. The clan's menagerie of horrifying creations is seemingly 
endless and exhibits a wide variety of mutated and surgically altered beasts. Of course, the creatures Mulder creates are descended from monsters that have been captured, either in the icy wastes of Kislev or in the forest lands of the Empire south of Hellpit. As a result, Mulder's pack masters are quite adept at capturing live prey. It has been said that each of Mulder's biological horrors is created with a built-in failsafe that prevents them from harming members of their parent clan. In addition, such creatures obey the pack masters and master molders without question, making them dangerous investments for anyone who wishes to purchase one. Should a customer become an enemy, he had best keep his attention focused on any molder made pets that he keeps. The mission of the Molders is simple enough, to create, via surgery, breeding, or mutation, the most effective biological killing machines imaginable. These beasts not only swell the ranks of Clan Molders' armies, but are sold to other clans, where they act as pets, bodyguards, or frontline shock troops. Mulder's goals have nearly been realized, and they work towards the day when their creations stand at the pinnacle of Skaven engineering. And now, on to Clan Mulder Units. First up, the Black Master. The giant rats and rat ogres of Clan Mulder are driven and controlled by Skaven who show a talent for mastering beasts. They are called Pack Masters, and the skill they display when controlling their foul pets is without compare. With wielding whips, the pack masters steer their charges into the enemy formations in which they can cause the most damage. From Stefan Paulus Adolf, a scholar of Wolfenburg. Pack masters are the trainers and handlers of Clan Mulder's various war beasts and hulking monstrosities. These specially trained Skaven are experts at goading their charges, ferocious, half mad creatures who can turn and attack with no warning. For this reason, Pack Masters are themselves cagey and fierce warriors, or if they are not, they quickly end up as another meal for their merciless packs. It is common practice for Clan Mulder to sell both Beast Packs and Pack Master Handlers to the highest bidder. In this way, pack masters leave Hell Pit to serve under warlord clans across the globe. Some clans, not fully trusting Clan Mulder, will buy beast packs but insist on supplying their own pack masters. Goading such creatures into battle is an exact science, and many clans who attempt their own handling are soon after savaged by their own rat beasts. Some few clans, notably Clan Chrysor of the Dark Lands, have an affinity for developing their own pack masters, but none, save Clan Mulder, produce enough 
to sell to the other clans. The whip is a favoured weapon and beast-driving tool, and pack masters quickly learn to become experts with a long lash. A pack master is adept at using his whip to direct the feral packs, or when engaged in combat, to snap the weapon at the enemy. Attacking over the heads of giant rats, or between the hulking rat ogres. Those that can afford such luxuries can upgrade their whips to something that delivers even more pain. The Giant Rats Vermin of any stripe are bad. They devour the grain stored for lean times or get into the seed. It's natural for farmers to make up stories about the worst kind of vermin, just like fishing stories they are. Each one gets bigger in the telling, and a rat that was once the length of a forearm grows to pony size in the end. I've heard tell of rats bigger than wolves and twice as mean, hunting down villagers and such. Rubbish. <laughs> Oh, there's big rats aplenty in the north, and I'd allow that one or two may have been touched by chaos, but how many could there possibly be? From Kastar Handlin, a traveling merchant. The giant rat is a staple product of Clan Mulder bioengineering who long ago unlocked the secrets of growing, mutating, and surgically augmenting typical rats into the ferocious predators they are well known for today. At a distance, these creatures might be mistaken for large dogs, but on closer inspection, their foul and unnatural disposition is all too clear. Like their smaller cousins, giant rats have hairless tails and feet, but unlike their natural brethren, giant rats exhibit rampant signs of severe mutation and the diabolical grafting so frequent in clan molder made beasts. Many giant rats have additional heads, sets of extra limbs, multiple tails, or even more monstrous additions, spines, spikes, tusk-like incisors, or vast hunches of bony plates can be almost commonplace, while some of the more grotesque creations have exposed ribs, enormous mounds of throbbing bubos, or worse. Giant rats have been seen walking upright in parody of man, or gifted with odd technical parts such as wheels or mace-enhanced tails. Regardless of their bewildering variations, all giant rats are vicious, wicked, and eternally hungry. Down there, in the darkness, if you ever face one of the Great Ones, know that neither sling nor dog will serve. Carry a sharp dagger and know how to use it, as swords are no good in the tight confines of a sewer. Put your torch to their noses if you can, as that's death for them, and they shy from the fire. You'll have to learn not to fear them, as they'll smell it on you, or it's lack. Remember always, what occurs below, stays below. From Tobias Drak, a rat catcher extraordinaire. While countless rats skulk through the sewers of the old world, there are very few capable of killing grown men without help. But such do exist. 
while a few of them have crept down from the north, where the chaos powers twisted them beyond their natural size, the majority are the result of generations of skaven breeding experiments designed to combine size, ferocity, and any other traits the foul experiments of Clan Mulder found desirable. Other skaven clans frequently purchase them from Clan Mulder, as they are the cheapest war beast that Mulder has to offer. Driven to battle by pack masters or a master molder, giant rats form a seething and snarling mass that seeks to rip, tear, and gnaw at any enemy they can reach. When deployed in number, their powerful jaws and wicked saber-like incisors can bring down far larger prey. Given free reign, the horrid creatures will strip all flesh from their victims. In a matter of moments, there will be naught left behind but cracked and naught bones. Giant rats are easy to breed and by far the cheapest beasts on offer from Clan Mulder. A few packs of giant rats are a common sight amongst the warlord clans. A few clans, notably Clan Mordkin and Clan Carrion, have been known to dye the hides of their giant rats, branding clan symbols into the mangy fur in the same way that Skaven slaves are marked. The Wolf Rats I fought some beasts in my time, tusker boars, corpse hounds, greenskins, and once I even killed a bear with two heads out with a hunting party in the Druckwald. But what attacked us in the hills near Helmgart was like nothing me nor the lads had ever seen before. Scrawny things they were, like rats, but bigger than wolves. And just as damned quick, Mikov was the first to go, dragged off his horse when two of the bloodthirsty beasts leapt at him from the trees either side of the path. Lighthold was next, then Grimald, then Bertar. All hamstrung and ripped open, bleeding out. Good as dead before any of the rest of us could bear steel. Then the woods were alive with the vile things screeching like razors on glass. So, what did I do? <laughs> well, I tailed it out of there, of course. I'm not bloody stupid. The testimony of a Sergeant Otkar of the first Altdorf militia. Rat wolves or wolf rats are distinctive creatures, blending the appearance of both skaven and wolves. Covered in a thick pelt of grey fur flecked with white, they have shorter legs than their skaven ancestors, keeping them low to the ground and suggesting that they are always ready to pounce. Their natural gait is to move on four legs, which only makes their ability to clumsily grasp and manipulate objects with their forepaws that much more horrifying. Their tails are long, pale, and naked of fur, and they have broad, rat-like heads filled with sharp, yellow, canine teeth. In times long ago, Clan Mulder experimented with combining their skaven blood with that of the great wolves of Kislev. 
The result was a bloodthirsty monster of such foul temperament that the master molders could hardly contain it, much less train it for war. They managed to wipe out nearly all of the creatures, but despite their best efforts, a few escaped into the tunnels of the Under Empire. In the intervening years, some escaped altogether, but a few remain behind to hunt their Skaven creators. Many are the strange and twisted creatures that have been spawned through the warpstone tainted meddling of Skaven Clan Mulder. Many too are thankfully rare while others, such as the twisted wolf rats, have bred true and multiplied in the manner of their verminous masters. And when a skaven slave escapes from its holding pen, it best run quick quick, as its pursuers will not be far behind. The skittering and scratching of claws behind them, not those of their goalers in furious pursuit, but instead those of the packs of wolf rats that many a skaven clan keeps for such bloodthirsty hunts. These ravenous monsters are neither rat nor wolf, but an aberrant amalgamation of the two, both lean and insatiably hungry. No one, not even the skaven master molders themselves, exactly know how they came into being, but they can be found almost everywhere that the skaven infest from the tunnels and sewers that run below the towns and cities of other races, in skaven nest lairs, as well as existing freely in the wild. Wolf rats are kept by the rat men for a myriad of uses, most commonly for guarding their lairs, hunting down creatures for their hideous experiments, and even in times of famine as food. Although the Skaven sent in to kill them are just as likely to end up as the wolf rat's next meal. The creatures can never be tamed and often break from the heavy chains used to restrain them, causing havoc throughout the clan's tunnels until they either escape once more into the wild or are hunted down themselves and DESTROYED! In battle, the Skaven will unleash the slavering wolf rat packs ahead of their own troops, as, unlike the cowardly Skaven, these beasts will readily charge headlong into an enemy. So eager are they to feast upon flesh. Fearless enough to dash into a hail of arrows, they will pounce and rip out an archer's throat before he has had time to draw his bow for a second shot. Then, tensing back on their long, muscular limbs, they will leap hungrily into the ranks behind to take their fill of the bounteous feast laid before them. Wolf rats are diverse and twisted creatures, prone to mutation and afflicted by their foul appetites. Some have an even more deadly bite due to their diet of diseased carrion. Others have been augmented with warp stone impregnated implants on their fangs and claws by clan scryer warlock engineers, and some others are many times the size of their kin, swollen brutes with a limitless hunger. The wolf rats 
voracious appetite means they are usually close to the point of starvation. Having killed most of the smaller prey creatures in their Pax territories, should they be summoned to battle, their hunger will send them tearing through the ranks of an enemy unit, their strength being bolstered with each mouthful of blood-soaked flesh they gorge themselves upon. The Brood Horrors The Brood Horrors are the greatest and most bloated of the giant rat species, created and formed when one of the litter begins to mutate extraordinarily fast and begins to feast and devour the rest of its litter, growing at an alarming rate whilst increasing in both strength and savagery. Due to the creature's reputation, brood horrors are highly prized by their molder masters and are only traded to the greatest of the warlord clans, for only they have the wealth to pay for their exorbitant prices. Many pay entire fortunes of warpstone or thousands of slaves in order to get the chance for the creature to be used as powerful mounts of war by many aspiring Skaven warlords. Other times they are simply prodded into the battlefield and sent towards their enemies in a killing frenzy, tearing and grinding everything in the path. The Great Pox Rat Great Pox Rats are abhorrent, bloated, and hideously overgrown vermin that are bred as a form of combat mount for many Skaven warlords. To engorge a giant rat to even further mass and obesity requires a master molder of extraordinary talents and the right blend of growth agents and hide grafts. They are covered by mangy fur, overtaken by patches of poxes and dripping lesions. A great pox rat's filth encrusted mouth is filled with needle-sharp teeth, saber-like incisors and yet-to-be-discovered diseases. Once astride the heavily bloated great pox rat, a warlord can rightfully twitch his tail in pride, for surely none would be so foolish as to challenge such a mighty personage. The Rat Ogre not truly skaven, the rat ogres, but they are aberrations nonetheless. I have seen but one in my travels, and it is a memory that I hide even from myself. Bred in the pits of the master moulders, not two rat ogres are the same, yet they share enough similarities to be easily identified. When driven by Mulder's pack masters, rat ogres are effective weapons of war. If left to their own devices, however, they are just as likely to feed on nearby fowl as to kill the Skaven or their enemies. From Stefan Paulus Adelhoff a scholar of Wolfenburg. Rat ogres are massive, hulking monstrosities that represent the very pinnacle of clan molder ingenuity. A lethal killing machine beast 
that combines the inhumane reflexes of a skaven with the brawn and size of an ogre. Though many would be mistaken otherwise, rat ogres are not a separate breed of the skaven race, rather rat ogres are creatures born from the fusion of cross-breeding different types of horrific creatures with skaven blood and surgically augmenting what is left. While Clan Mulder certainly succeeded in creating deadly war beasts, rat ogres are arguably flawed creatures, bereft of reason and nearly devoid of sanity. Their unlikely genesis has left them utterly dependent upon their creators for any kind of mental faculty and they are literally incapable of functioning without the direction of another's will. Their small brains are as such devoted singularly to the pursuit of fighting, tearing, and simply enacting wanton bloodshed. Once a potential rat ogre is born, the creature is subjected to a long series of experiments intended to encourage traits that their creators favour, such as overwhelming bloodlust, mindless ferocity, and unnatural loyalty. Many of them may indeed have ogre blood in their long and varied ancestry, though none but the eldest master mutators could tell. They generally appear to be massively over-muscled skaven standing some ten feet tall at the shoulder, though many of them are grossly misshapen and may have grafts, both metal and flesh, fused to their bodies. Though they all share similarities, not two rat ogres are physically identical. Mutations bred into the creatures by the master molders give them a variety of different shapes, sizes, and capabilities. Some are even surgically modified with implanted weapons, many of them experimental creations of Clan Skra. Each rat ogre receives training of a sort which involves constant deadly duels with Clan Mulder's other foul creations. Therein they learn to follow the guidance of their packmasters and become used to the rigours of violent combat. They might also gain valuable insight into tactics and strategies, if they didn't forget anything too complex after a day or so in their pens. Despite their physical boons, rat ogres are barely sentient. Without the constant supervision of Mulder's pack masters, a rat ogre would wander aimlessly about the battlefield, only stopping to grab a quick snack or two, or to rip the throat from any living thing that was unlucky enough to attract its mercifully short attention. Rat ogres much kill, tough strong, but hard to control. Only the pack masters can use them well good. From Skrelin Furntik, a grey seer. In battle, rat ogres are usually sent in packs while being supervised by a small team of pack masters. Once unleashed, a rat ogre is totally consumed with an unnatural rage and would begin to rip, tear, and kill anything that the pack master has directed his wrath to. 
A rat ogre pack moves with a terrifying speed on the battlefield. Once the pack collides with the enemy, all that can be heard over the battle are splintered shields, snapped bones, and the roars of the rat ogres drowning out the screams of their victims. As such, a rat ogre is incapable of almost anything except killing and warfare. After a battle, pack masters must hurry to capture and restrain these brutes after a victory before they start killing each other. Such confrontations have left many scars upon the rat ogre's skin, both from battle and the abuse of their masters. At the height of their rabid fury, rat ogres have been known to rip and devour chunks of their own flesh, as if they sought to tear apart the monstrosity that Clan Mulder has made the creature into. The Rat Ogre Bone Breaker The Rat Ogre Bone Breaker is one of Clan Mulder's specially engineered variant breeds. The Bonebreaker strain is created by taking a rat ogre and submerging the stitched monstrosity in a vat of growth agents for months. It takes thousands of slaves dying horrible deaths to produce enough growing juices to fill the vat, but it is easily offset by the asking price for the muscle-bound behemoths. When it emerges from its forced chemical immersion, the Bone Breaker is a prodigiously proportioned rat ogre, so bulked out that its upper body is hunched over, straining to contain such massed brawn. A braced platform strapped or bolted onto the creature's back allows a warlord to ride atop a rat ogre, Bone Breaker. When mounted atop such a beast, a warlord becomes pride swollen and behaves more arrogantly than ever. The Armored Rat Ogre Armoured rat ogres are particularly hardy rat ogres who are often further modified with rusty armour plates and crude weapons grafted directly onto their bodies. The advance of such monstrosities across the battlefield is accompanied by the screech of tortured metal and the bellow of a tortured beast. The Mutant Rat Ogre Mutant Rat Ogres are a much more grotesque and powerful variant of the Rat Ogre. It is in every Mulder's nature to want to improve upon something that is already a success and occasionally they even succeed. The cream of the rat ogre creations in Clan Mulder's possession spawned extra limbs, heads, and even minds since Throt perfected the practice of transplanting human brains into rat ogre bodies. The Augmented Rat Ogre Augmented rat ogres are among the most powerful of their kind. On the rare occasions that Clan Scryer and Clan Mulder cooperate, the results are as deranged as they are effective. Augmented rat ogres are as much machine as they are flesh. 
erratically hissing and cranking across the battlefield as their grafted pincers snap like shears and their warp fire projectors throw great gouts of fire into the enemy ranks. The Storm Fiend. The Storm Fiend is the ultimate and brutal combination of Clan Molder bioengineering and Clan Scryer's sadistic techno magic. Hulking behemoths clad in bulletproof metal armor and equipped with massive Gatling cannons or swirling armored gauntlets. These monstrosities are amongst the greatest and most unstoppable monsters the Under Empire has to offer. Rats ogres are hulking flesh beasts stitched together out of component parts assembled or grown by Clan Mulder. They combine great strength and savage ferocity with the speed of a skaven. However, just because they were a successful breed and sold to nearly every warlord clan that could afford them did not mean that Clan Mulder was not still tinkering. Indeed, the flesh manufacturers of that clan were never satisfied, but were always seeking ways to make their creations ever more deadly. In the end, it was Throt the Unclean, a master molder of Hell Pit, that hit upon a solution. While others fixated on developing longer claws or grafting multiple arms, Throt set about getting to the root of the matter. Rats ogres did not lack in brawn or fighting potential, they lacked in mental capacity. They were small-minded creatures with a singular instinct to kill. It took much training from pack masters to lead them into battle, and even then, the brute beasts were difficult to control. Thus, what Throt attempted to improve was their woefully tiny brains, reasoning that if the beasts were smarter, they could be given weapons to use. The operations were dangerous work. For it was impossible to subdue a rat's ogre. They were either viciously fighting with all their might, or they were dead, with little to nothing in between. Even when they were chain-bound with heavy fetters, it was difficult to do brain work on the rat's ogres. Worse still, the experiments were abject failures. The more the creatures could think, the less violent it became. Throt was all too aware that the sole reason Clan Mulder sold so many rat ogres was due to the creature's mindless aggression. To rob them of their kill kill mentality was out of the question. The next step for Throtz was a logical one. If he could not make the beast smarter, could he fuse the pack master onto the beast itself? Well, not surprisingly, those pack masters who were chosen to be permanently stitched into the back of a rat ogre, their brains and vital fluids connected were profoundly unhappy. As these pack masters now controlled over muscled, hulking mauler beasts, their dissatisfaction was all too apparent, and these experiments had to be cancelled. As there were no willing volunteers, Throt had little choice but to grow them himself. Through gruesome and repugnant techniques, 
Throt grew the required subjects and merged other parts with captives or slaves. The result was a batch of scrawny and submissive skaven with unusually large brains. Once permanently integrated into a warp stone powered harness and rigged with coils and tubes, the Skaven's body would become more and more atrophied. Eventually, if it lived long enough, the Skaven would become little more than a shriveled husk with an auxiliary brain that could help steer the savage beast with which it was melded. Early results were astoundingly successful. The rat ogres remained ferocious, but they could be briefly controlled by the far more sensible brain creature hardwired into their backs. Unfortunately, there was a drawback. The rat ogres were able to use weapons now, but Clan Mulder quickly found out they had nothing with which to make their new creation any more destructive than its previous iteration had been. The rat ogres could wield the enormous clubs or oversized swords taken from defeated ogre tribes, but it made them no more dangerous than they had been with their own claws, fangs, and boulder-like fists. There was only one place in all the Under Empire where the best weapons available could be found. The Warp Forges of Clan Scryer. Meaningful collaboration between the Skaven clans has always been rare, as neither side trusts the other. Even begun with good intentions, such broker deals never end well, as the temptation to take advantage, swindle, or somehow cheat has always been an overwhelming urge for any Skaven. However, Clan Mulder's timing could not have been better when Throt arrived in Skaven Blight seeking Clan Scryer's aid. Clan Scryer was seeking allies, for Lord Morskitar had long been planning the demise of the Grey Seers. The Lord of Decay considered support for his schemes, especially from the greater clans, to be vital. This being the case, Morskitar's orders were to placate the Beast Makers as much as possible. As it happened, Ikid Claw of Clan Scryer had been developing several powerful, albeit problematic, new weapons. In between his failed rocket launch attempts, the Chief Warlock had attempted to upgrade the devices of the weapon teams, but each new design proved too difficult for the teams to carry, too weighty for even larger crews to lift or aim. Although Ikid himself was hardly keen to work with Throt, it was his belief that all those from Clan Mulder stank of a fell. The Chief Warlock was anxious to get back in Lord Morskitar's good graces. It was not long before the improved rat ogres were being kitted out with the new weapons. Ikid was surly to begin with. However, as each technical problem was overcome, he began to see great advantages. The hulking rat ogres could bear heavy weapon loads, a fact that allowed them to carry multiple guns along with the necessary ammunition feeds or warp generator power sources. Despite Ikid's misgivings, Throt proved especially adept. Without question, the Master Molder sawed off bits of arm bone to facilitate the attachment of warp-forged gauntlets, or increased the rate of brain juice transference to better allow the brain creature to guide his brawny teammate. It was Throt 
who suggested an automatic cut-off mechanism on the rattling cannons, for it had proven impossible to get the rat's ogre or its brainier counterpart to stop firing, resulting in them using up their ammunition in one sustained spray of bullets. To trial the new weapon beasts, a handful of them were released into a sealed slave pen. The results were spectacular. The weapons were improved and more deadly than ever. Better still, they were not carried by Skaven, but by hulking brutes that could more easily shrug off enemy arrows. In the few cases where enemies got close enough to attack the newly dubbed Storm Fiends, they found themselves mauled, crushed, or battered by club-like weapon barrels. When the Skaven overran to Lear, the Storm Fiends were unveiled before the Warlord clans. The sight of a rat's ogre armed with doom flayer gauntlets and wearing armor full of spinning blades wading through a street battle was enough for many to place orders immediately. Skaven warlords simply stood agog as they witnessed three rattling cannons borne upon a single rat's ogre wiring away to single-handedly halt enemy counter-charges. Soon, Clan Scryer and Clan Mulder could not produce the upgunned weapon beasts quickly enough, no matter how many warp tokens they overcharged. The Storm Fiends! War Gear! In secret warp forges deep below Skaven Blight, Grey Seers, Plague Monks, and Warlock Engineers have joined forces to create a terrifying range of new weapons and equipment. The Doom Flayer Gauntlets by attaching huge motorized iron balls and wiring blades onto the ends of a storm fiend's arms, a truly fearsome tunnel fighter was created. To further protect these close combat maulers, they bear heavy armor adorned with spinning cleaver blades. The Wind Launchers. Some storm fiends bear paired wind launcher mortar fists. Mundane armor offered no protection against the vapors released by the poisoner's wind glows lobbed into the fray by these weapons. With each shot, a new glass orb filled with gaseous death clicks into position, ready to be fired. The Grinder Fists Some of Throt's storm fiends were adapted to carry warp grinders, allowing them to create their own tunnels by vaporizing soil, rock, and roots alike. Once in combat, such a storm fiend will grind at the foe, disintegrating flesh with ease. The Shock Gauntlets For the ultimate in shock assaults, Storm fiends armed with electrified gauntlets were produced by Clan Skrar. Powered by warp generators, it is the heavy armor the beast wears that is the true weapon, for it conducts arcs of warp lightning that wreathe the rat ogre's body in crackling energies. Simply being near one of these creatures is enough to sizzle many foes to a burned crisp. 
The Rattling Cannons. For pumping out sheer firepower, there is little that can match a storm fiend equipped with rattling cannons. Three sets of eight barreled weapons bedeck this hulking muscle beast, enabling it to pour forth warp bullets which riddle entire enemy units with holes. Warp fire projectors. Storm fiends armed with warp fire projectors wade into battle, shooting arcs of green, black warp fire from their heavy gauntlets. While these great cones of unnatural flame occasionally miss their target, it is a small price to pay for the devastation even a single shot can wreak upon enemy regiments. The Aberration Aberrations are beyond classification, the aborted experiments of crazed molders whose ambitions outweigh their skill. Invariably driven mad by their fate, aberrations will go to every length they can to ensure their miserable lives are drawn to a close as quickly as possible, pleading for death as they throw themselves upon the enemy's blades. The Burrowing Behemoth the Burrowing Behemoth is a vast, balding monstrosity that burrows blindly in the deepest tunnels of Hell Pit, which were originally pioneered as a way of expanding Mulder's subterranean empire. However, these blind and twisted beasts are no less effective in battle, bursting from the earth and smashing into the enemy with earth-shaking force. The Chimera Rat The rarest of all Clan Mulder's creations, the Chimera Rat defies all logic in its form. It is a blasphemy against nature that is to a common rat what a hydra is to a common lizard. Inevitably multi-headed, the Chimera rat wheezes sickly green warpstone fire as it hauls its benighted bulk across the battlefield, scorching the earth in its wake. <sighs> The Hell Pit Abomination The Hell Pit Abomination is the greatest and most horrific monstrosity the Skaven of Clan Mulder have ever created. The creature is a mountain of misshapen flesh that moves in a rippling tide of unnatural spasms, writhing worm-like and using its many limbs to pull and drag its hideous bulk forward. Various mechanical bits such as wheels, cogs and fluid pumps have been grafted into the beast to ensure it moves at optimal speed and that warp stone mutated growth agents are regularly injected into the beast's hyper-fast metabolism. A multitude of heads dart out of the lumpen mound of muscle and bone at the behemoth's fore. The heads that snake out are all vermin-like, but some glisten hairlessly like unborn rat monstrosities. 
Many have eyes, but no few are blind, twisting and craning to catch the scent of prey, hissing and snapping at the air with razor-sharp incisors. In battle, an abomination sent loose against the enemy is an unstoppable juggernaut. Many foes will flee from the unnatural sight of a hell pit abomination long before the creature gets close. With a horrifying slither and shamble, the creature propels itself across the battlefield, wearing up to a towering height before it hits the enemy, lying like a thunderbolt. Vast, boulder-sized fists smash aside shield walls and send foes flying, while hungry jaws snap and greedily devour the broken victims. Once in combat, the Hell Pit Abomination is relentless, dragging its bulk onwards to crush any in its wake. Hell Pit Abominations are notoriously hard to slay, and there are accounts of the beasts visibly healing wounds, regrowing severed limbs, and rising from the dead to attack again. The Throttlings Throttlings are so named because of Throt, the Uncleans, obsessive habit of grafting together unfortunate creatures with warp stone, infused salve when he is in between projects. The resultant nightmarish assortment of limbs, mouths, and horribly abused minds crawl through the depths of Hell Pit, unleashed as cannon fodder in times of war. The few scraps of sentience left to these benighted creatures cannot bear to be seen in their new and repugnant forms, and go to great lengths to kill all who look upon them in sobbing fits of jealousy and self-loathing. The Master Mutators Commanding the Skaven's hellish legions of twisted flesh are the Master Mutators. These mad Skaven hold the foulest secrets of their craft, trickling the information to the Master Molders, empowering them with just enough knowledge to protect their clan while keeping the rest secret so as not to be overthrown. It's not known what abominations can be attributed to the Master Mutators, but some believe that not all of the terrors found in the Old World are by the will of the Changer of Ways. The Pack Masters claim in hushed tones and with shudders that the Master Mutators' best subjects are themselves. The Master Molder. Fear, stupid man thing. We make better. Improve, improve. Pain, pain, but better, better. Master Molders are the senior ranking members of Clan Molder, a rank just above the more common pack masters, but below the great master mutators. The things created by these sadistic vermins within Clan Mulder's laboratories frighten even the powerful Grey Seers. Nothing 
is sacred to these vile skaven. They blend the parts of hundreds of creatures to create something bigger, better, and stronger. A horror that will safeguard Mulder's place at the top of the Under Empire's cruel militaristic hierarchy. Through the techniques of flesh molding, these master molders create a menagerie of deadly creatures. Ever evolving, this process involves a combination of surgery and exposure to warp energy to create something new and terrifying. Trained in flesh-shaping techniques, passed down generation after generation, they are responsible for giant rats, rat ogres, and any number of other abominations. These burly commanders often personally lead their beasts to battle to better inspect the performance of both pack and pack master. Master molders instill great control and discipline in a pack, largely on account of their ability to cause even more severe pain. Many master molders bear unique, if not downright horrific, tools of their trade, such as the Thing's Catcher, a wicked-looking prod with a mechanical grabber. Throat. Three. On. Clean. Throt is one of Hell Pit's most feared lords, both creating and leading vast numbers of bloodthirsty creatures as the master mutator of Clan Mulder. Whenever Throt fights, he wields Creature Killer in one of his three arms, a modified thing's catcher that can grab and throttle beasts as large as rat ogres. From an anonymous source. Throt the Unclean. He is one of the most twisted and ingenious master mutators of Clan Mulder and has exploited that success to position himself as a third of the Nine Lords of Hell Pits. The effects of a lifetime's work with Warpstone can be seen, as bone spines protrude out of Throt's back and a third arm sprouts out of his bloated but powerful frame. His left eye, torn from its socket in a struggle with a rival, has been replaced with a shard of warp stone crudely hammered into place, feeding its baleful influence directly into Throt's brain. Over several self-developmental experiments, Throt has rapidly sped up his metabolism and now grows ravenously hungry after exertion. He requires constant nourishment and gluttonously crams tremendous amounts of food into his eternally unsatisfied gut. It is the black hunger only worse, eating more than four times his own body weight daily. Throt maintains such a pace to avoid being ravaged by his own warp-enhanced constitution. Surly at the best of times, when deprived of food, meaning the instant he stops chewing, Throt becomes mindlessly ferocious. Throt's rise to power has been marked by an ability to create and lead to battle any number of bloodthirsty creatures, along with a knack for capturing new beasts on which to experiment. 
whether it is obtaining blind worms, discovering the applications for troll spleen, or cultivating the best growing juices to increase the size of rat ogres, few can match the deeds of Throt. He is active in advancing Clan Mulder's status, and it is not unusual to find Throts accompanied by packs of war beasts joining many Skaven battles. When Throt personally joins the fight, he wields Creature Killer, a modified things catcher of his own design that can grab and throttle beasts the size of even a rat ogre. Additionally, Throt carries the Whip of Domination, a special whip made from minotaur hide and cured in troll digestive juices. Even the hunchbacked and mutated things that scuttle throughout the warrens of Hell Pit fear its stinging pain. As a result of his excessive contact with the pure warp stone he uses in his mad experiments, Throt has mutated over the years, in mind as well as body. Great spines of bone have sprouted from his back, and unnatural warp stone fueled energy courses through his veins, suffusing his three arms with power. So great is his strength that he is capable of pinning the strongest rat ogre to the ground by the neck using his wickedly spiked creature killer. This unnatural energy ravages his system, however, and he requires constant sustenance to keep the energy from consuming him. Maddening hunger ceaselessly torments him, and he carries pouches stuffed with all manner of vile creatures he uses as foodstuffs. His left eye, torn from its socket in a struggle against a rival packmaster, has been replaced with a shard of warp stone crudely hammered into place, feeding its twisting power directly into his fevered brain. Throt is one of the oldest living Skaven within Clan Mulder second only to the clan's mysterious Lord of Decay. His lifespan has been extended far beyond its natural course by the manipulating effects of Warpstone. Much of Clan Mulder is connected through the bloodline of Throt, for he has spawned literally hundreds of offspring, and they in turn have birthed countless others. The ranks of Clan Mulder include so many generations of Throt's offspring that he has become something of a patriarch amongst the wealthy clan. Of course, as is the Skaven way, this bloodline conveys no hint of loyalty from his underlings, and he has slain countless numbers of his brood for plotting against him or for posing a threat to his position. His power within the clan has often been undermined by his wary superiors sabotaging his experiments and scheming against him. Utterly consumed with his disturbing research, Throt has long since lost whatever hint of sanity he once had. His waking hours are filled with his twisted studies, and the depths of his domain echo with the cacophony of tortured cries from the living abominations dwelling there the horrid results of his unnatural experiments. Crossbreeding all manner of creatures and utilizing the mutating effects of warp stone, 
Throt is ever seeking to create more destructive creatures to set on his enemies and trade with other clans. In his sleep, his corrupted mind is filled with demented dreams, his mind plunging ever deeper within his insane delirium. Having spent some time in the far distant land of Lustria, Throt has formed a tense agreement with the Skaven of Clan Pestilence, incorporating the Plague Monk's knowledge of disease and corruption into his own disturbed creations. Throt has created a mutated form of rat carrying a fast-acting, lethal contagion which he has begun to breed within the Skaven underworld. It is rumoured that Throt himself has contracted this disease, but that his warp-stone-enhanced constitution has thus far kept it from overcoming him. Throt's latest obsession is his most ambitious project yet, Inspired by witnessing some of the immense creatures dwelling within the tropical jungles of Lustria. His fevered, insanely brilliant mind is now consumed with creating a monstrous rat creature. Mutated out of all proportion so that it will tower over even the largest of rat ogres. Squeal, no tooth. Squeal, no tooth is one of the greatest and most naturally talented pack masters within Clan Mulder. A pack master must learn when to ply the lash how to control infighting, and how far beasts can be pushed before they will turn. None are better attuned to their foul creations than Squeal, Nortooth, the most successful pack master in Hell Pit. Squeal was a runt often a death warrant among Skaven litters. Though this may vary by clan, Skryer has at least one adult runt in its employ as a tinker rat. In the daily competition to live, however, Squeal could count on unlikely allies to aid his undersized cause. His comrades were not Skaven, but common rats. Squeal had a natural affinity with beasts and was often accompanied by a rippling horde of vermin. It wasn't long before the master molders took note of the dread Squeal commanded amongst his fellows, as any who stood in his way disappeared into the tunnels, pulled into the darkness by rat hordes. When Squeal was given a chance in the pens with the larger beasts, he was not mauled as are most newcomers. Instead, from that day on, Squeal was trained to become a pack master, a task he took to with zeal. The majority of pack masters seem to drive their charges, but Squeal seems to guide creatures rather than simply lashing them forward. To Squeal, giant rats and rat ogres are not barely controlled feral beasts, but trained animals eager to do their master's bidding. After a successful hunt, it is not unknown for the brutes to present Squeal with choice pieces to feed upon. Even new breeds buckle under Squeal's commands. Wolf rats, hypergland rat ogres, specially bred siege beasts, all are bent to Squeal's will. Only the mindless Hell Pit abominations seem immune to Squeal's mastery. 
Squeal's ability to control dangerous packs makes him invaluable. Lord Verminkin will only release Squeal's services to the highest bidder, and only for a limited time. Squeal has led sniffer beasts, hunting rogue assassins, packs of black rage enhanced rat ogres, aiding clan moors in the dark lands, and a tunneling gnaw beast into a dwarf stronghold. But Squeal always returns to Hell Pit, ready for his next assignment. And at last, Gorich! A former general of Archaeon the Ever Chosen once ignored his commander's orders and was sent to Hell Pit as punishment. There, Throt transplanted his brain into the body of a rat ogre, creating an aberration of incredible speed, strength, and intelligence. Gorich, the Castellan of Hell Pit, is Throt's greatest success in the field of translocation of the brain, a hulking rat ogre with the mind of a human. Like many who are devoted to the Blood God, Gorich was once a frenzied Northman berserker who loved the thrill of battle and the tang of fresh blood upon his tongue. He once served Archaon, but the creed of his bloodthirsty god ran strong in his veins, and Gorich led a foolhardy attack on an Empire artillery train, despite express orders to the contrary. His tribe was cut down almost to a man. Though Gorich slew a score of men that day and lived to tell the tale, Archaon's punishment was swift and inventive. Like many who failed him, Gorich was given to the master mutators of Clan Mulder for their unholy experiments. Even shackled and bound with thorn ropes, Throt could see Gorich was of exceptional stock and singled him out for the climax of a series of experiments. The experiment was an unparalleled success, transplanting Gorich's mind into the body of a heavily modified rat ogre without driving him mad in the process. Escaping from Throt's laboratory, Gorich scrambled his way up to the arena at the heart of Hell Pit, where he fought off the tide of Throt's creations sent after him. His skills did not go unnoticed by the master mutators, who recognized his combination of intellect and strength as perfect for controlling the more rebellious of their troops. Gorich worked his way into the rank of chieftain, and was soon entrusted with the command of Clan Mulder's unique standing army. Throt is less than pleased at the meteoric rise of his creation, and works hard on clandestine schemes to bring about his downfall.